Hi guys, Victoria here. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to the second Florence vlog from April 2023. I have visited Florence for five days and in this video I am going to show you a few places where you can go vintage shopping and some lesser known sites in Florence that you can visit if you would like to avoid the crowded touristic places. The first place that I visited was Melrose Vintage Ginori. Melrose has two vintage stores in Florence. This is the bigger one, I believe, and this is the one where I went first. It is a very interesting store with a wide selection of vintage pieces. You would be surprised how many little rooms there are. It's way bigger than you would first expect. Possibly it is the biggest ass assortment of vintage clothing in Florence. Lots of beautiful pieces and most of them are in perfect condition and it's very organized inside. The men's collection is as big as the women's collection. Well stocked and reasonably priced. They had an impressive selection of coats, cashmere sweaters and cardigans, jeans and more. I tried on a few pieces but I did not buy anything at the end. I really really like this cardigan and the buttons especially. Look at them how beautiful. However it was a bit small and the price range I mean it's not expensive but still I wouldn't want to give like 40-50 euros for a cardigan which is a bit small. This knitted dress was also a good high end brand and it looked quite good but there was like one issue with it where I, where I was saying yeah I'm not gonna give out this much money for something used which there is an issue with it which would bother me in the long term but overall it's just a good experience to go to this place if you like secondhand things and to look around you can spend quite a bit of time here and then there is this second Merlos which is called the Vintage Alinari which is down in a basement and uh, this one is a slightly smaller but you can find some very special items here as well so uh, it is worth a visit for sure at this point i was quite tired <laughs> during the day so i didn't take that many records but in the description down below i also i'm going to list a few other vintage stores that i have visited in florence from where i don't have footage and even if you don't have any intention to purchase anything, these places are very cool just to browse and find some interesting things and some also some valuable things for a very good price. Then uh, I also visited uh, the market of Sant Ambrogio, which is an other market outside of the central market where you can go. If you are looking for an authentic Italian shopping experience rather than the one that you can get at central market which is more directed and designed for tourists then you should go to this place instead. Fresh produce, meats, cheeses, pastries, nuts, pasta, even clothes and shoes and household goods, everything that you can think of you can, you can find here. You will be picking out your items along local residents and buying from local farmers and merchants. Everyone is raving about the coffee bar inside where you should stop for a coffee and a croissant. Somehow I missed this coffee place or it wasn't open to be fair when I was there. It was a Monday before a holiday. On Tuesday was a holiday and maybe for this reason some of the merchants uh, were not present and not open. The place felt a bit empty and half of the stalls were closed even though I was there after 10. Um, or maybe that was the problem, maybe they were open earlier that day, I'm not sure. But um, if you want to avoid the, the amount of people and the crowds in Central Market and if you want a more authentic experience, then I definitely recommend you to go to this place instead. The main reason I went to this market is because it is right next to the Mercato della Pulci which is basically the flea market of Florence where you can browse and search for vintage and retro items and treasures. They have furniture, art, books, records, anything that you can think of. And if you like vintage things and if you find joy in searching for treasures then this is a place to go. 
When I went, uh, most of the places were open. I have re read some comments that um, the opening times or on Google are not accurate, which is something that I have noticed across all public places in Florence that the opening times on Google were not completely accurate. For this market, it is stated to be open between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., but in fact, it is more open between 10 and Two. So it is definitely better to go before 2 p.m. And I went at 10 and that was the time when they started to open. So by the time I went through all the little um, merchants and stalls, yeah, they were all open. This flea market is actually a very new location. Uh, previously, the flea market was somewhere else. And it's definitely a place worth popping into. You can find something interesting at pretty good prices. I am recording this car specifically because my father has uh, the same car, uh, just a different age, I think from 67 or 69 and in a different color. And I was considering to buy it, but it was a bit too big for my luggage. <laughs> I only bought, um, well, I bought two things, a book and some buttons. One of the vendors is actually selling buttons from one of the famous Florentine clothes uh, designer, fashion designer, and she has buttons from the 1910s and from every year ever since. And the, her collection is amazing and impressive. So if you need any buttons, to be replaced on a coat or something like that. Uh, her little story, something worth visiting. From the flea market I went to grab coffee from Fluid, which is a specialty coffee place and they give you non-dairy milk for your cappuccino or any other coffee that you prefer for free. Same price as normal dairy milk, which this is supposed to be the case everywhere, but obviously everywhere they charge an extra 50 cents at least, if not more. So I had my coffee here, I had a cappuccino, it was 4 euros, which you can definitely get cheaper cappuccino in Florence than that, but you can also pay more depending on the location. So I pretty much enjoy this coffee and it's also a place for students to study and people to work in pretty big and I quite liked it. Then I went for a walk in the area and I encountered another flea market, which was a pop-up flea market, I guess. Not sure if this is always here or just for a special occasion this time. They were selling vintage clothes, jewelry, records, books, all kinds of things as well. In today's video, I also wanted to show you some other lesser known locations in Florence, which are worth visiting. The Officina Profumo Pharmaceutica di Santa Maria Novella sets its roots back to 1221 and it is considered today the oldest pharmacy in the world. This pharmacy and museum can be found not so far from the main train station, the Santa Maria Novella train station of Florence, so it's also not too far from the historic city center. It's Apothecary art legacy crosses eight centuries and is deeply intertwined with Florence history and personalities. The today's officina is famous all over the world for its perfumes, candles and traditional preparations. It all began around 800 years ago when the Dominican friars were granted the use of Santa Maria Intervineas. It was a small church just outside the city walls where they cultivated a botanical garden of herbs and plants to craft medicines, ointments and balms. In 1334, the Dominican friars of Santa Maria Novella rose to greatness for healing the rich merchant Dardano Acciaioli coming from one of the most powerful families of Florence, as a sign of gratitude, he donated them the magnificent San Niccolo devoted chapel that still today sits at the very heart of this boutique museum. 
In 1542, the pharmacy doors officially opened to the greater public, and in 1612, it was formally recognized with the name of Officina Profumo Pharmaceutica by the Grand Duke of Tuscany, who also granted it the title of the foundry of his royal highness. In the 20th century, the Officina relaunched and turned its Florentine traditional shop in Via della Scala 16 into a major museum, a prominent touristic and cultural destination. So I discovered this destination through a um, vlog which was dedicated to lesser known, less crowded and touristic places. However, when I visited, it was definitely very busy and quite full with tourists. So I guess nowadays with the spread of social media, it is not so easy to hide such beautiful places anymore and tourists have found it, but it's still worth a visit. I accidentally stumbled upon this small church which is primarily known as the Church of Dante in Florence. According to tradition, Dante met his muse Beatrice here for the first time and fell in love with her. Many visitors like to think that sweet Beatrice is buried here in the church and in front of what traditionally identifies as Beatrice's tombs is a chest full of messages that lovers leave to Beatrice asking her to protect their love. The church serves as a location in Dan Brown's Inferno as well. It is located in one of the oldest neighborhoods of Florence and it is only 20 meters away from Dante's home, which was in front of the Castagna Tower. Today, where Dante's house was located in the, is a museum dedicated to the poet and to the divine comedy. Oh, oh, oh. 
Continuing with some other lesser known places in Florence, this is the Instituto degli Innocenti, which was founded in the 15th century to care for abandoned children. Its construction was entrusted to Filippo Brunelleschi, who is the same architect who is credited for the dome of Florence Cathedral. The orphanage began to care for children who were abandoned and left in a basin outside the outside loggia. Today it acts as a form of a hospital. Though Brunelleschi intended for the circles between the columns on the loggia for the hospital to remain empty, Andrea della Robbia was selected in 1490, long after Brunelleschi's demise, to decorate the six frontal and four lateral concaves. The ten medallions have the standard light blue background with white putti dressed in swaddling clothes to represent abandoned children and orphans. This courtyard leads to the Basilica Santissima Annunziata. History tells of a small oratory back in 1081 built to thank the Virgin Mary for saving the city after a siege. It was eventually abandoned and left in a state of despair just out outside the city walls. In the mid-13th century, a group of seven men banded together to form the Order of Servite, dedicated to serving and honoring the Virgin Mary. They requested the use of the uninhabited oratory. In 1252, the friars decided to beautify the building with artwork dedicated to the Glorious Virgin during the Annunciation. According to legend, the painter friar Bartolomeo despaired over the details in painting the face of Virgin Mary. Distraught that he could not do her justice, he finally fell asleep, exhausted from his attempt. He awoke to find that an angel's hand had finished painting the details of her face and it has since been called a miraculous annunciation. Even Michelangelo claimed it a divine piece of work. In 1447, the friars, with the help of Cosimo de Medici, decided to create a temple based on the design of Michelezzo to preserve the painting of the Virgin. Rich with marble from Carrara, bronze designs, ceramics, and many other intricate pieces of art. You can access the Cafe del Verone from the same square from where you access the church and the Institute degli Innocenti. And this cafe is particularly interesting because it's very beautiful and unique views to the city. The cafe itself, I mean, their products are no, not particularly unique or exciting. You can go there for a coffee or a drink, um, some food, but I don't think it's any special. However, the view that you get, it's quite unique. And for this, it is worth a visit, at least for one drink. And I went there in an afternoon and there were available spots without booking. So it's not something that is overly well known. You can always get a table. And then my dinner was in this restaurant, Risotteria Melotti Florence, which is actually a rice restaurant. So most of the things or everything on the menu is based uh, on rice that they themselves uh, harvest. And they even have uh, tiramisu made with rice, which if you have a very sweet tooth, I do recommend, but if you don't have a very sweet tooth, um, I, I didn't like it personally, it was too sweet. And I also had a um, risotto, which was really nice, with um, eggplant cream and um, pistachio pesto. However, the risotto was a pretty small portion for the price, I would say. 
this is it for today guys thank you for tagging along i will have one or two more videos from florence coming up so if you have liked this video press the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can also watch the upcoming videos which will be published and there is also of course a previous florence video actually two of them so i'm going to link them in the description down below as i visited florence already once in july last year so there is a vlog from that and there is another video focusing mostly on the Palazzo Vecchio and a few tips and tricks on how to visit Florence and make the most of it. Thank you for tagging along. I hope to see you at my next videos. Until then, goodbye.